Welcome back, YouTube. It is Monday afternoon, 1.16 p.m., uh, July 10th, 2023. My interview is at 2 o'clock. That's where I'm headed to right now, although I might make a stop between here and there. In fact, I want to, I, I want to make a stop between here and there. Oh, and it just occurred to me that before I make that stop, I really better check Google traffic. Oh, there's my poor Benz. I should maybe just be trying to find somebody to buy that thing. Just sell the whole thing and quit having to worry about it. Obviously, I'm not going to get it together and and sell it. Looking at my iPhone, I'm seeing I'm seeing notices coming in from ZipRecruiter that have the word forklift in them, and I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. That's I'd much rather be doing that than going to this job interview I'm going to right now. But at this point, like somebody puts me to work full time, I'm I'm going to be dedicated to that at least until I get caught up on my bills, uh, assuming the job's paying me enough that it's feasible for me to get caught up on my bills. Hang on, I'm checking my gotta focus here, trying to check on on Google traffic. I should have done that before I even came out the door. Because sometimes as early as like 1 o'clock, the 202 starts to go to hell. But yeah, okay, 202. Can you all see that? 202 to the 51, all looking good. All looking good. Um, hot as hell in my car. I did remember to put in the sunshade. I didn't remember putting the sunshade when I got home last night from the Andre house with Allison. But um, after my um, wee hours of the morning adventure, A super super cute neighbor just waved at me. Part of me really would love to get to know her better, but I I I, I have the uh, I have a feeling that she's already got herself a white boyfriend that she lives with. And, and good for that guy, because uh, yeah, from from the few conversations I've had with her, and every time I drive by, she's my type to a to a T. <laughs> In fact, if I sat down and <clears throat> was like ordering like like let's see what features do i want on a partner I, I would probably end up with someone that looked awfully similar to her just saying i need to not think about that my mind wanders every time i see her so yeah the interview i'm not sure if i really said much about it so a couple weeks ago when i was going in and out a total of three times actually a total of four times because there's one time i went in but i couldn't get past the gate as it had closed at four o'clock so um not last week but the week before or was it the week before that? All this shit's starting to blur together. Which is why I'm shooting so much video to the point that I'm over a week behind at uploading them. Just so I do have a record of how this all went down. Oh look, on the left, there's a uh, cruise. Autonomous vehicle, self-driving car. I don't see those anywhere as much as I see Waymo, and I don't think they offer uh, offer transportation services to the general public like Waymo does. And I've seen videos of them. They are offering transportation to the general public in the San Francisco area. And I've seen um, videos of them. And, and and they are to people who are on like a specific... What the hell was that? Oh, that guy. Oh, that guy was trying to turn right. And he turned right behind me from the middle lane and was refusing to go. So the guy behind him honked at him. Smooth. To be fair, that signage could be better, but man, if you missed your turn, just just go. Double back to it. Don't don't make the roads unsafe. Don't inconvenience other people. That's not cool. Uh, so cruise heading south. I can't I can't tell if, he's, if it's driving itself or it's got a human in it. I should really look and see if they're hiring anybody. I love a job like that where I can be pursuing one of my many passions. Um, and, and I have a lot of things I'm passionate about, and one of them is autonomous vehicles. But every time I look at websites for places like that, there's just nothing in the way of entry-level positions that will get me through the door. And all the positions are just things that uh, I, I can't even wrap my head around. And in like the where it says the responsibilities and it says the requirements, I feel like I'm reading another language. What the fuck is synergy? Seriously. And then of course most of them are like, you know. Two years, four years experience, and blah, 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 blah. It's kind of vague, and definitely nothing that I've done for that many years. And, and then this kind of degree, and this, and that kind of degree, and that. I, I got a fucking GED, people. I'm a Minson. Does that count for anything? In the right environment, I can learn. And my capacity to learn is 
way beyond an average person, and I know this. And if you brought me in, you, you could you could experience this. There are people in upper management at GYR3 at Amazon that know this. Of course, those people weren't able to influence the decision that I'm convinced was made by them. I had abandoned my job and terminated. I do think I became eligible for rehire at Amazon. Within, within a reasonably soon period of time. Not soon enough for me to save my job, and, and I know how much of a delay there is when you start working at Amazon. And when you start getting paid at Amazon, that's, that's also problematic. So the job I'm heading to right now, I was influenced to do that as I was editing, uploading, or doing vlogs of the week. I can't remember. It was definitely not last week. Was it the week before that? The week before that? I don't know. They're blurring together. But the week that started with me having a job interview every day for three days. And all three job interviews were like acting as if I was hired. Oh, yeah. We'll send you an email. We'll have you right to work. We just need to blah, 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 background check. And the third one I figured was was a was a shoe in because it was Domino's fucking pizza. I mean, my God, my the last time I worked for Domino's Pizza, I had literally been released from prison less than a month before I went there. My first job out of prison was, um, and for those who haven't been following this vlog long enough, I, I, I did an extremely an extremely short bid in Lewis Prison, Arizona Department of Corrections in 1999, um, like right in the beginning of 1999. I ended 1998 in the custody of Maricopa County Jail, where I had been on a probation hold for an obscenely long amount of time, which at one point got put on hold as I had severe mental health issues. I had a full-on breakdown while I was in there and like just simply wasn't competent enough to even participate in the process, at which point I got transferred to the Arizona State Hospital and was held in custody there while getting treatment, which, which is actually probably the best thing that could have happened to me in that circumstances. I mean, my God, had they dismissed the whole proceedings and released me, I... Yeah, I would have definitely been in danger of myself and others. I was in bad, bad, bad shape. And thank God that when I was going through that procedure, that I didn't have a public defender. I had actually a close friend representing me. Uh, a close friend that had an office literally across the street from the jail and just decided out of the kindness of his heart as a friend that when he would close his office around 5 p.m., rather than just heading home and fighting traffic, it was a better use of his time to, uh, that's actually comfortable in the car right now. I'm so bewildered by that. Uh, that it was actually a better use of his time to just leave his car parked where it was, in a parking pass, monthly parking pass for that from the Blair's Tower, walk across the street. From what he said, like the procedure for him to visit me was a whole lot different than, than the convoluted procedure for everybody else. He says he more or less just walked right in. He goes, yeah, there's some shit. I got to do security, but he goes, it's, it's not. Because I asked him about that. I'm like, my God, how are you doing this every day? He's like, it's, it's not bad. And he explained to me that they got a kind of a fast pass sort of thing for attorneys of record, um, incarcerated people, since, since the, you know, the state knows their time is theoretically valuable. And, and they don't know. They don't know that that's a friendly visit that he's not charging me for. He, they just know that he's my attorney of record, and so they treat it as a legal visit. And instead of communicating to the silly telephone thing, like we were in a private, private enclosed room that had no surveillance in it, you know. So it was, it was a pretty freaking awesome visits. He felt it was a better use of his time to come over every day. I, I, I won't say every day, but I mean, I would say he came and visited me on more weekdays than he didn't visit me. And my God, I just wonder like how miserable that would have been if I didn't have my friend Mark coming all the time, right? So, and, and sometimes we didn't talk about my case at all. We just talked about, you know, mutual friends and mutual interests and, and music, it just, just whatever. Basically, he would just try to kill, kill a little time. I should have waited for that light and went straight. Uh, he would try to kill a little time so that he could leave downtown at like 6, 6.30 p.m. And then drive to his place on the outskirts. I forget what side of town he lived on, but I know he kind of lived out. Nowhere near downtown. I remember him telling me, damned if I can remember. But, you know, I mean, I remember that he told me, but I can't remember what he told me. Does that make sense? He told me that if he waited until 6 o'clock, that he would drive home and there wouldn't be any traffic. And that he ended up getting home not 
significantly much. Like he ended up getting home like 15 minutes later, even if he went and spent a half hour with me, just because of the way the, the traffic worked out. So, so that was that was good. It was a win for for me. It was a win for him. But my mental health started declining while I was mental health ward inside Madison Street Jail, which is now the county attorney's office. Amazing job they did at renovating that, by the way. I, I really want to get some video of the inside of that place. I don't know if they'll ever allow me to do it, but just I'm I'm just interested in a purely architectural. I love repurposing of old things. Especially when they're repurposing into something that's a building, it's repurposed into something radically different. Uh, I mean, I'm a big fan of Oregano's restaurant just because that's something that they do. Sadly, I think that that chain is in decline these days. Mark came over and I was in, in 6-3. But yeah, at one point my mental health started declining in a big way. And, and my memories of it are really fuzzy, but I think at one point I went blind. Like literally... I was blind. I, could, I couldn't. I couldn't see anything. I experienced. I experienced total blindness. Um, now there was not a medical reason for it. I didn't. Have, you know, my my blindness is nothing that an ophthalmologist or an optometrist could have fixed. I think that would be an ophthalmologist anyway. I think optometrists just deal with uh, glasses and LASIK and that sort of thing. Contacts. Little things that you stick on your eyeball that I could never possibly use because I can't even put in fucking eye drops. The mind is a crazy, crazy thing. It's, you know, I mean, just overall. I mean, not my mind is a crazy, crazy thing, but the mind in general and the power of the mind to, to change a person's perception of something is, is a, an overwhelmingly wild, crazy, and powerful thing. And at that point, something went wrong in my mind that made me blind and I had to be escorted and I couldn't, I couldn't, I don't think I could even vocalize. I do remember seeing Mark. I didn't see Mark. I remember sensing Mark and I don't know if that was Mark hugging me or just shaking my hand and I could, I could just feel his handshake. Mark had a hell of a firm handshake. If it was, it was just his in big hand. So maybe, it, maybe that was it. I remember his voice. But I remember not even being able to string string a sentence together. Oh my god, just the memories coming back. Oh my god. Just the memories that do come back. Oh shit. This is not the state I need to be in right now. Anyway, long story short, because I'm at the Cox store. Um, he filed an emergency motion and got me the fuck out of there and got me to the state hospital where I did eventually get stabilized and had a hell of an experience and, a, and, a, and an adventure. And uh, that's not what I was trying to blog about, but sometimes when these memories come out, I just like to get them recorded. Um, someday maybe I'll put it all together into a book if I can sort it in order. Anyway, I'm going inside. It's, uh, oh goodness, it's uh, 129 on the Saturn clock, so that means uh, 132. I don't want to be late to my two o'clock apartment, but I'm wanting to see if I can pay for my Cox bill right now. Quit dinging car. And I'm back. She reminds me. It's a car dinging. I, I still haven't heard back from Rob. We were supposed to get together on uh, Saturday morning to take care of the car overheating issue. And uh, I haven't... Get on your side of the road, dude. Uh, I haven't heard back from him since. As I recall, the way that was supposed to go is he was supposed to call me while headed into his shop around 9 a.m. ish. Uh, he's got both of my numbers, my number and also Brittany's number, and was supposed to just. And, and I know it's a weird thing to ask somebody to do, but I just sometimes alarms don't do it for me. And 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 also, and, and I love Rob to death. I really do. But there's been more than a couple times where. I have thrown, like me getting good sleep is something that's very valuable to me and doesn't happen enough. And, and I've set multiple alarms and managed to wake myself up out of a dead sleep in the middle of a block where I could have maybe got a good solid six to eight hours of sleep to, um, to, um, connect with Rob at an early time to get something done on my car and all those got all those alarms and then I, I called him and he didn't answer and I'm like well whatever I'll see him at a shop and then I've got to a shop and he wasn't there and I've waited and waited and waited and he didn't show up and I tried to get a hold of him and couldn't get a hold of him 
So, um, so yeah, I've, 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 I've stopped doing that. I've stopped doing that. Um, you guys, though, they do have a stop sign. I guess at one point I probably should have went there, but anyway, navigating shit like this is always so awkward to me. Um, hey, that's what my daughter's car looked like when her mother committed suicide in it before my daughter destroyed it. It, it was a nice looking dark blue Nissan Sentra, very similar to that. that guy knows where he's going turn in that direction anyhow I'm um, glad he went the other direction I was getting tired of following him at, at two miles an hour I mean I try not to exceed 15 when I'm going through parking lots like this and, and be hyper aware of you know, pedestrians and other 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 slow moving vehicles within the parking lot but on the same token like the people that like there was nothing there were no pedestrians on that side of the mall and 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 yeah getting stuck behind somebody that feels the need to drive five miles per hour just makes me want to pull my hair out on that note getting loads and loads of negative comments on my short uh, of the guy criminally speeding, flying around me and then drifting over four lanes directly in front of me to exit uh, on loop 303. Loads of negative comments. I, I, I can only imagine how badly I'm being ratioed uh, for the first time ever. YouTube hiding down bows is actually beneficial to me. I don't give a fuck. I don't do this channel for, you know, whatever. It is It is what it is. If it's generating hate, whatever. Uh, you know what I mean? It's, inter it's interaction. It's, it's interaction. And, and that's still a positive thing, the way that YouTube algorithm works. So, um, but that video, I feel, has gotten viral. I think it's, it's, I mean, you know, depending on how you define viral comments or anything, but I think it's up to like 20,000 views, which is insane for a video on my channel. Uh, in fact, it might, it might be on its way to surpassing the views of the, uh, I want to say original, but it's really not the original, but one of the earlier recordings that's not available on other streaming platforms. Like, I, I mean, there are some other uploads of it on YouTube, but they're not as good a quality as mine, I don't think. The version of Torn by Edna Swap, which so many people think that's a Natalie and Brulia song. And then a whole bunch of people think it's uh, some Scandinavian artist. And no, it's it's an Ann Preven song. Ann Preven of, of Edna Swap. It's straight up an Edna Swap song. She wrote it. Scott Cutler is credited as a, as a co-writer. I, yeah, his contributions were... I've talked to Ann about this. His, his contributions are pretty fucking minimal. They did like Lennon and, and, and McCartney. Regardless of who put how much effort into it, they just put both their names on it because they were partners like that. I'm thinking that the, the absolutely... Uh, well, uh, you're a Karen. You're spelled Y-O-U-R. You're a Karen. Um, yeah, um... About, about to surpass the views on End of Swap Porn. Blowing my mind. So I'm on my way to uh, Hertz Rent a Car, obviously. Got my Cox bill not paid, mind you, but the overdue portion is paid. So I am current for the moment. Um, normally, if I'm a little late on something, to the point where the next my next month's bill has come through, I just pay all of it, so I don't have to worry about it. But right now, like my funds are spread so thin, and I put that on my Wells Fargo credit card, so yeah, there's no sense in paying additional interest on something I don't need to need to pay quite yet. Sorry, I just suddenly started wrapping my head around what the best approach is to get uh, to where the Hertz office is. I think I'm going to try that weird thing that I did one time when I was trying to escape uh, some super weird traffic on the way to Amazon, where I uh, used Sky Harbor Drive and then uh, I forget what the heck the name of the, the street is, the, the, the street formerly known as 24th Street, and then double back. Oh, no, no, the best way to do it is to go through No, there's a way I can go direct using the Washington exit. That's the one my brain was. That's how it was done. As I get closer, all the pieces kind of came together. Yeah, the, the cab driver navigation in my head, that's 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 one of many voices that's always 
Taxi man is always on point with that shit. Just saying. Uh, so, God, where was I? Sorry, I'm not very focused. But yeah, so I got the overdue part paid. Yes, it was out on a credit card. I just gotta ration out what my available resources are. Um, putting putting more on it would have been a uh, would have been a bad bad plan because it would just resulted in me having to pay more interest to Wells Fargo at the end of this month. Speaking of them, um, so at one point I did get an email from them telling me that I was eligible for a 30 buck, buck, buck a month discount through some kind of a benefit that I qualify for. And I was about halfway through the application process when I called Cox, which I said I was going to do, you know, last week to try to make sure that, you know, that they, that I was in touch with them and let them know that, Hey, I'm struggling with this. Can I, you know, what, what are my options? What can we do here just to make sure, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to pay this, but I'm struggling. You know what, what work, work with me here. I, 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 you know, I'm, I want to work with you. all work with me here. Kind of, kind of moment. I should have turned right with the other direction. That's what happens when I'm talking and not listening to the to, to Dan Dan the taxi man telling me which way to go in the back of my head. And the shitty thing is I could have turned right and not had to wait behind those cars. Oops. That's all right. It's uh, 147 with three minutes on it, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's, it's 150. I'm going to be right on time with my sweaty self. Um, you know, I think this is the one time of the year if somebody goes in for a job interview, especially one for, for the, this rate of pay, um, if you come in looking a little sweaty and nasty, it's not even held against you because everybody's a little sweaty and nasty in Phoenix. And, and right now, it's humid as fuck. Like, where did this come from? It's overcast, so I don't have the sun blistering down, but I got humidity instead, so it still feels, it, it feels, it feels, it feels, it's muggy, it's nasty, it's hot. Um, and, and of course that, after I have a early morning random look up with somebody from, from Florida, coincidence? Yeah. I don't know, coincidence to tell you that. It's like he brought Florida with him. Mixed it with Arizona and put a 105 or whatever it is on uh, on some humidity. Um, anyway, so the guy was super super fucking cool at the Cox store. Uh, yeah, if I had to turn right, I would have come to this intersection and could have turned right on red, even though I got a red. Although most of the time that doesn't work out because there's somebody camping in the right lane, stopping me from turning right. I don't know why that always happens. Did you see that? Three people in the right lane, two left lanes, completely empty. I don't. I don't get why people queue up like that. Um, anyway, yeah, the guy that helped me was super cool, and you know, I just told him, you know, why why I was paying just the overdue portion for the whole thing. He's like, yeah, I get it. It's cool. It's like I'm like, yeah, a job interview for a car wash attendant. I said, I, I'm just, I'm gonna, you know, I ain't proud. I'm gonna do what I do, but but my main thing is I'm a I'm a hell of a I'm probably one of the best karaoke hosts in the state of Arizona. I'm pretty pretty known for it. And I said, on top of that, I'm a I'm a hell of a good forklift operator. I said, I just uh, there's there's a sign I kept seeing <laughs> that inspired me to come back here. Um, yeah, showed up in like four of my vlogs. Last one I'm looking at, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I've got I got nothing but time on my hands right here. I'm at home. I'm on my Wi-Fi. Let's 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 hurt dot dot jobs or whatever the hell that website was. Let's 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 do that. See what I see what I get out of it. Okay, I got definitely got time to put my sunshade in. I definitely want to put my sunshade in. The sun is not as brutal today as it has been for the last like couple weeks, but still. Who knows when the cloud cover is gonna leave and, and even on a slightly overcast day. The, uh, the sunshade helps. Um, See, so yeah, that guy was that guy was cool as fuck, and he understood it. And I said, I said, you know, is Cox hiring? I said, I just I need a I need a job. So so he actually wrote down the website of exactly where I go to apply uh, to apply for like his job <laughs> and said something like you know what whatever jobs at Cox. I really don't know. I really don't know what what jobs. But anyway, jobs jobs there. Um, gave me the website to it, and then I gave him my my card and said, hey, do you ever know anybody's looking for 
like a DJ, especially a DJ that specializes in karaoke. Um, I'm a decent DJ, but I'm, I'm the best when it comes to karaoke. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to work cheap right now. And he's like, oh, hell yeah. And then I, and then I realized that I'm, I'm sitting at 20th Street and Camelback, 18th Street and Camelback-ish. And if he works near there, Royal Lounge is just a couple miles to the south when it goes from, from nice to, to hood. And this guy looks like he's more the type to, to party in the hood. And so I mentioned my wife, I said, oh, hell yeah, I know Royal Lounge. I said, well, yeah, I'm there. I just started this week. I'm, I'm there doing karaoke every night on Saturday, man. Come on down. He said he would. Now, if I had a dollar for everybody I met out and about that I handed my card to and invited my show that didn't show up, I could probably buy a, I could probably fix all the body work on the Saturn and have it looking perfect. But maybe he will. Maybe he'll show up. Maybe not. But he definitely gave me a website that can help me out. On that note, I'm going in for my interview. Oh, I hope this works out. I hope I don't get hung up on background checks that never end because I'm so sick of that. Oh, I did finally get a text message back from uh, my representative, uh, Raquel, over at uh, Pro Logistics. 